number five. Number five is, I mean, number five wasn't involving a, a difficult relation between the two. There's no product rule or anything like that. Y doesn't appear in two places. It's just you're asked to find the second derivative. So you need to find the first derivative and then go through and sub it in. That was the key there. Okay, so that's, I don't know why I put it after the other ones, but, and then I, it doesn't matter to me which way you put this, if that was missed before. Either way, as two separate fractions or combined together. This is the one that you were saying you didn't like? Yeah. Or well, something along those lines? Yeah, four, I got it, but. This probably the difficulty is that it's a product rule and you need the chain rule on one of the functions. But again, you start start by differentiating both sides. If those two are equal, then their derivatives are equal. Derivative of x, x sine y didn't give myself much space here. And this cos, I think this cos x plus y is bothering some people too. Perhaps we should give ourselves more room here. On the left side, the product rule of that, if it helps, just write the two things like this. You need x prime times sine y plus x times sine y prime if you want like if you if that helps you kind of start and then you can fill in what the derivatives are right like if this is if this is u and v it's u prime v plus u v prime if that helps start you can do it like this with brackets it's kind of a weird notation but it's, it's okay right if you're saying those derivatives the derivative of x is one the derivative of sine y with respect to x is what it's cos y, but it's not just cos y, right? Because it's. Would you have that there, though? You'd have that there, yeah. The first you first you do it as though you're completely blind to what's inside there, right? It's a y, but you just think of it as the derivative of sine of something is cos of that thing. Wait, but aren't you just taking d? Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, I see what you're saying. You're right. Thank you. What was that? Can you say, can you say that again? I see. I I see now. Um, it's hard to talk and think and write at the same time. You know that, right? So, okay, so what I just said, I am recording this one. I'm so happy to say. Uh, what I just said applies to this. Okay, we need not repeat it, right? This is, even though I will, cos y times, if you, if you don't like writing this big thing as a fraction like that, you could easily just use y prime instead of, dy dx, if you like having it as a single variable, it doesn't matter, right? Whatever you want. Okay, if you want to do that, maybe we'll do this one with that kind of notation. That's one side of the thing. The other, the other side of the thing is the derivative of this. And again, to start with, you, you just look at it as cosine of something, and then you worry about what's inside. Cosine of something is going to be minus sine of that, but then you need to multiply by, now you just look at the inside, the derivative of what's inside. You don't worry about the cosine anymore. This is, derivative of this is one. The derivative of this is dy dx or y prime, whatever you're using. And then you have to gather the terms that have this in it, all on one side. So you should probably sim you should probably worry, kind of get rid of some of the brackets and simplify it a bit here. Sine y plus x cos y times y prime equals. Now, can I? Is this something I can distribute? You don't. You don't have to because you can't. It's sine. It's not sine. It's not like sine of something. It's not like sine 30 degrees times xy. It's sine of that, so you can't distribute it, right? You can't distribute it when you have a function times something, when you have a function of something. If you have square root of xy, you can't write it as square root x plus square root of y. But if it was square root of 2 times x plus y, you could, right? That's the same thing here. This is sine of that, so you got to leave it like that. But you can distribute this times times that stuff, right? So you have minus sine x plus y minus that again times y prime. 
Okay, sine x plus y times y prime. If it helps to keep these highlighted so you know what you're gathering together, you probably want to put all of that on one side. Move this over there. Maybe move this to the other side. So we're going to have sine y plus sine x plus y. And then on this side you have, whoops, I'm losing my, I'm going the other way, aren't I? Uh, x cos y times y prime plus sine x plus y times y prime. That's equal to, uh, if we move this over here, leave this alone. And then the sine y over here, minus sine y. Not much room left here. Hopefully we can finish this. If you factor out the y prime and leave everything else the same, x cos y plus sine x plus y. Okay, this goes from being in two places here to being factored out in front, which is how you're going to isolate it, right? And then to get that by itself, you divide both sides by this, right? So this is going to end up underneath there, divided, right? Okay. I wasn't going to do that because then I know it makes you feel bad that you can't do that. But Does that match, I really hope, uh, what I have in the answer key? Yeah. Yeah, it's exactly. good. Exactly, that's good. Of course, you if you had done it the other way, and like the signs of these things could have all changed. I mean, this could be positive, positive, negative, negative. So if you if you do something like this and you get all the signs reversed, it's the same, of course. Um, is there any questions about that? Yeah, there's this one. I, I put I called it additional problem because I think at this point I don't know how much it helps to do another one right now, but later we could come back to it and do it when you uh, when you have forgotten to do this. How to do this? Hey um. You don't have to come up here. You, you can ask everybody.